Let's have a chat about when you're in the playroom and all of a sudden the child in the play doesn't want you to move, doesn't want you to speak, maybe even doesn't want you to breathe. Like, what do we do in those moments? And I wanna talk about it from two different perspectives. The first is this idea of the setup or the offering that we talk so much about in synergetic play therapy. In those moments, it's really an invitation for us to get curious about what does that feel like? You know, what does it feel like to not be able to move in the way that we want to move? Or what does it feel like to not be able to speak? Likely, it's very connected with what the child is trying to get you to feel about their experience. Maybe they felt controlled, maybe they felt silenced, maybe they felt constricted in some way. So that's the first piece is let's not think of this as a random occurrence in the playroom and become more thoughtful about maybe what is the brilliance that this is occurring in this way and how does this give me insight and information about what the child is potentially trying to work through. So let's hold that as, as one part of this conversation. The other part of this conversation really goes into regulating and our ability to stay connected to ourselves. And I want to talk about this in two parts. So the first is that if we are in the moment with the client and we are acting as their external regulator, maybe we're taking a deep breath because things just got intense. Maybe we're having a moment where we're like, whoo, this is big. And in those moments, the client is saying, don't breathe, don't move. We really need to stop and first question, are we regulating in a way that actually genuinely does need to shift? Like, is there something that we are doing that potentially is overly activating to the child? That's an important piece for us to consider because we are working towards attunement. And let's say we have a child, for example, that has an auditory processing difficulty and we're taking really loud, deep breaths. That literally just could be, that hurts my ears. So let's think about that in terms of as we are co-regulating, are we co-regulating in a way that supports the child in being able to stay connected to themselves? Or are we regulating in a way that feels um, a bit too challenging? And that's simply why we're getting the feedback to stop because it actually is landing as a bit of a challenge or an irritant. Again, that's a little separate than the setup that we just that we just talked about, but equally important to consider. And then the last piece with this idea of regulation is that in order for us to continue to be the external regulator, we as the clinician need to be able to stay in relationship with ourselves. So if the child is telling us, don't move, don't breathe, don't say anything, and it is so activating to us, that we feel like we can no longer stay connected, there's permission to set the boundary, right? There's permission to acknowledge, okay, you want me to be quiet and show me another way. Okay, you don't want me to move. Oof, this is a lot, show me another way. That's different than no, it's about acknowledging and redirecting. So, I know I just threw in three different things to consider, but hopefully that helps you when those moments come up. It may just be something that we go with in the play again, and we keep in mind, what is the setup? What is the wisdom in this? How are we getting a felt sense of what's going on for the child? That may be one consideration. Another consideration, are we co-regulating or regulating in a way that actually feels too much of a challenge to the child? And, and we actually do need to, um, maybe move in a little bit of a different way, or we do need to breathe a little bit more quietly or whatever that may be. And because sometimes these types of things can create a lot of uncomfortableness inside the clinician, because it can be very activating to be silenced. It can be very activating to be put in a corner, for example, and not be able to move or to be restricted. If it's activating you so much that you can't stay present with yourself and the child, then absolutely it's time to acknowledge and redirect and um, set a boundary.